My dear students, Dr. Shwakor here, and as you are well aware, I have authored books for NEET PG, NEET DM, NEET MCH, as well as some of the books for USMLE examinations, MRCP examinations, and my lectures would be intended to get you right on the top there for your next examinations, DM examinations, MCH examinations, MRCS, MRCP, USMLE examinations. I hope my videos will benefit a lot. I will be presenting my things in a very easy, simple and palatable form for you. Wish you good luck for your exams. Thanks a lot. Today's class would be regarding a very important topic, frequently asked multiple questions asked from this topic and that would be pertaining to the surgical anatomy and related medical conditions related to spleen. As far as the spleen is concerned, it happens to be a very important intra-abdominal organ from both the hemopoietic system as well as the lymphatic system. Now, the anatomical location of the spleen is in the left upper quadrant or the left hypochondric region predominantly. This spleen, as far as its dimensions are concerned, you follow a certain dictum and we can say that Roughly, on an average, the spleen is one inch thick, three inches broad, five inches long, and almost seven ounces in weight, and related to ninth to eleventh rib. So almost all the odd numbers coming in line. Now, spleen once it is placed in the body, it would be having an anterior surface and a posterior surface and the posterior surface would be usually related to the diaphragm, left hemidiaphragm. And on the anterior surface, which we also call as the visceral surface, would be having important structures in relation to it, especially the stomach, the gastric area, the left renal area and the splenic flexure of the colon, a colonic area. Also in the hilum of the spleen, we have the terminal part of the pancreas, the tail of the pancreas entering into the hilum of the spleen along with the splenic vessels. Now, predominantly there are two important ligaments connected to the spleen and they are the gastrosplenic ligament and the lino-renal ligament. And gastrosplenic ligament would be containing short gastric vessels and left gastroepiploic vessels in it. And the lino-renal ligament would be containing two important structures, the splenic vessels and the tail of the pancreas in it. Frequently asked the contents of these ligaments. Now after that, what is the blood supply of the spleen? The splenic blood supply is predominantly from a tortuous artery, the splenic artery, which is a branch of the celiac trunk. Now, spleen gives its blood to splenic vein, and splenic vein drives the superior mesenteric vein to form the portal vein behind the neck of the pancreas, which you have to remember, and it would be dealt in portal vein. Now, after that, what are the various surgical conditions in which spleen has got its importance? So, first of all, is something what we call as accessory spleens. In addition to the spleen, we have at a normal left hypochondric level, there are spleens which can be formed at other places. Why? Because during embryonic development, the spleen, which is formed from dorsal mesogastrium, there might be certain ectopic tissues we just get implanted at certain other sites and we call that as axillary spleens. So they can be present in various ligaments, in various other organs as well. Now, after that, this after this clinical condition of axillary spleens, we have something called as the wandering spleen. Spleen 
sometimes may be associated with a longer peritoneal fold and this longer peritoneal fold would give spleen excessive mobility and the spleen would not be located within the left hypochondrium it would be dragging away from its normal position and it cannot be uh, felt or by ultrasound it cannot be located there and this condition is called as wandering spleen now is there any associated feature associated with this wandering spleen yeah sometimes there can be torsion of splenic vessel and which can re lead to autosplenectomy so wandering spleen can be associated sometimes with torsion of splenic vessels which has to be kept in mind then in spleen there's a clinical condition sickle cell anemia in sickle cell anemia what can happen there can be sluggish blood flow to the splenic vessels because of abnormal sickle shaped uh, sh uh, sickle shape of the rbc's and there can be clogging of the splenic vessels as a result of which there can be auto splenectomy spleen rather than getting increased in size gets reduced in size so one clinical condition you have to remember connected with auto splenectomy is sickle cell anemia in contrast to sickle cell anemia there are various other conditions in which spleen can be enlarged moderately or massively and there are various infective conditions there is malignant conditions and simple malaria a tropical disease kala azar hairy cell leukemia lymphoma some of them can be associated with massive massive splenomegaly so we have to remember the causes of splenomegaly as well in addition to that in sometimes in trauma road traffic road traffic accidents rtas we can be having an injury to our rib cage and resultant uh, subdiaphragmatic uh, injury and maybe spleen might be ruptured and what can it what it can cause it can cause irritation of the left phrenic nerve as a result of which we can be having pain in our left shoulder region a classic sign called as kahar sign not classic of splenic injury only it can be present in various other intra abdominal injuries as well but this classic sign called as kahar sign would be more frequently related with splenic injury blunt trauma to the spleen then we have got the splenic flexure of the colon which is a relatively a vascular area and this is a very important point of ischemia because of vulnerability because of low blood supply now nowadays we have got surgeons performing splenography we invariably don't remove the spleen as a whole we repair the spleen and that would be called as splenography sometimes we have to remove spleen as a whole because the condition of the patient doesn't permit the spleen to be repaired and that would be dealt with splenectomy uh, surgeons usually tend to avoid taking out spleen as a whole but sometimes it becomes necessary so that condition is called as splenectomy now after splenectomy the spleen happens to a very important immune organ we can have something like opsi overwhelming post splenectomy infections and a multiple range of organisms can be causing this opsi and we have to be very careful about pneumococcal infections especially and this opsi is associated with opportunistic infections and we have to take care and we usually give a pneumococcal vaccine and prevention for other infections after splenectomy so we have to remember all these clinical medical and surgical conditions associated with the spleen along with the surgical anatomy of the spleen i hope that you will find this small class of mine useful thanks a lot